Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today, by request, I'm going to show you how I drew this landscape using oil pastels. I have a review for this set of 24 oil pastels on my YouTube channel, so if you want to check that out, you can. And um, I thought this would be a really fun uh, project to do because it's a very uh, muted range of colors. So I'm starting with this really pale blue. Um, it's almost like a periwinkle color, and I'm applying it to my Canson XL sand grain paper. I taped off a border, um, and I like to do that whenever I'm working with oil pastels or soft pastels, which are the chalky feeling kind. I like to tape it off because that way I have an area that I can handle it with and not get the pastels on my fingers. So oil pastels, if you've never used them before, are kind of like a really soft crayon. They almost feel like you are drawing with lipstick. Um, these are a little firmer than that, but they are a very soft and creamy uh, type of product. There's a lot of really good quality brands out there that aren't very expensive. So um, what I look for when I am picking up uh, oil pastels, if I'm not sure of the uh, quality of the brand, I look for the words soft oil pastels. That generally means that it's going to be more of a creamy consistency and not a hard consistency. Um, and I also look for made in Korea on a lot of pastel sets because there's a good company in Korea called Mungio that makes a lot of the um, soft oil pastels for many stores and companies. So, um, so that's another giveaway that it's probably going to be a decent quality product. So at this rate, this state, I'm just blocking in colors and I'm leaving this real time. This only took me about 15 minutes to draw. So um, definitely something that you could try as your first oil pastel project and um, a great way to practice blending and filling in the tooth of the paper and all of that. So you can kind of see how I overlap the blue a little bit and I overlap the pink on itself a little bit, but I didn't overlap the yellow because I didn't want to have mud. Now I'm sneaking some violet in between that kind of raspberry pink and that um, kind of a, like a corn, cornflower periwinkle blue. And I'm also adding some of that into the blue area so that I can blend it out to be skies. So when I'm overlapping my colors here, I want to make sure that I'm using color friends. Color friends are colors that are near each other on the color wheel. Um, that way they're not going to make mud. If I took purple and I overlapped it on yellow, those are opposites. They're color opposites on the color wheel and they will make brown or gray or kind of a mucky color. So I want to be really careful when I'm doing Doing a sky that involves yellow and purple that there's a bridging color in between that will blend into it such as that that pink and that raspberry color those colors are in between yellow and purple on the color wheel so they'll make a nice um a nice harmonious transition they'll make a nice blend they'll give me beautiful transition of color without mud now i like to use my fingers to blend my pastels together um, if you don't like this if it either irritates your skin or um, you just can't stand the feeling of it you can pick up what's called finger cots and um, they're just made from like a silicone you can find them at the dollar store and you can use those to protect your fingers as you're working um, you can also use silicone tipped nail art tools those work really well and they're quite affordable. But for the most part, my fingers work pretty well. Now this paper, the sand grain paper, is a fairly new product on the scene. It's very affordable. I think I paid, um, this is a nine by 12 pad and I paid under $6 for 40, a 40 sheet pad at Blick. Um, I'll link that down below. I'll link everything down below so you can kind of see what's available. But uh, it was a great value and it's got wonderful tooth. It holds plenty of pastel and um, I feel like I can blend well on it. It's just a really nice paper and uh, and very affordable. Feel free though to use whatever papers you have on hand. Oftentimes what you have will work just fine. Your sketchbooks probably have a little bit of tooth to them and that will work well. If I'm doing oil pastel in a sketchbook, what I like to do is take a piece of tracing paper, glassine, or deli paper and uh, put that in between the sheets but uh, on the uh, sketchbook page if I'm going to use the facing page for something else because it will smear. I find even using fixative, I will sometimes still get some color transferring onto the facing page in a sketchbook. And I think part of that is because, you know, when you use your sketchbook, you'll be drawing and like uh, be like pressing on the back sides of those papers and it can kind of transfer things kind of like doing a, a scratch art or something. So um, so that's what I like to do when I have them in a sketchbook. But for the most part, I'll work on single sheets like this and then um, I will wrap it with glassine and store it in a big flat file until I'm ready to... Um, 
to frame it. So what I'm doing now is I'm doing some kind of like um, a little more detailed clouds. I'm putting in those little wispy cirrus clouds that I was seeing and um, I'll try to find that reference photo. I actually did this painting a couple weeks ago so I'm not sure if I still have um, I still have it. It was on Unsplash. I remember that. So I'll see if I can find it. If not, you can uh, you can dig around there. Um, I wasn't sure if I was going to post this or not, but I had a few people ask for a tutorial for this when I did the review of the Mungio oil pest. Not the Mungio. Oh, I think they're made by Mungio, but it's the Marco Raffine... Um, uh, set there of the muted colors, um, which is a little bit high, I will say in price currently, but I think the price will probably go down. I also find that the pastel Paul Rubens, pa uh, uh, oil pastels are very comparable and they are a lot cheaper in the United States, but depending on where you are, you may find, um, a better buy on this brand or another brand. So I find as long as they say soft oil pastels, you're going to have a pretty decent product. Um, if you want to go top of the line, I would recommend Sennelier oil pastels. Those are gorgeous. They're softer than this. So you could even lay the Sennelier oil pastels down on top of this and it would stick. So it's just the same thing as like working with oil paints. When you're working with oil pastels, if you're not going to just do everything in one layer, you're going to want to do fat over lean. And that means that you would put your, um, your leaner layers or your harder pastels down first and then you would layer up with the softer thicker fatter pastels as you go um, and and most art is like that most anything if you're doing mixed media you're putting those thinner layers those harder drying layers down first and the softer smooshier layers on top and so that's basically what they mean when it's fat over lean your your upper layers have more oil or more softness or slower drying properties to them so now I'm sketching in this mountain here and I'm doing it with one of the blues that I used in the sky. So uh, something I like to do when I am working is I try to repeat the colors as much as I can. When you repeat the colors, you get color harmony and it really makes for a more lovely painting. Now I'm blocking in some of the shadows, lights, and reflection on the mountain. So you're going to see kind of um, areas that are hidden from the light being a little bit darker. You're also going to see the sky colors being bounced around on the surface of the mountain. And you'll see um, like the sunlight as it's fading, as it's setting, being um, reflected on the snow on the mountain. So it's just such a really pretty painting. And the fact that it's a limited color palette, it really... Um, it's, it's just really easy and harmonious to do. So that's another reason I recommend this as kind of a first oil pastel project. And if you've never used oil pastels before, it wouldn't hurt to watch the tutorial all the way through and then go ahead and paint along. Now, I did actually pause my editing and go online to see if I could find this photo. And um, I did some searches on Unsplash and I couldn't find it. And the laptop that I was using died that I had downloaded the photo to. Otherwise, I could have... Um, uh, seen where I downloaded it from and, and found the address, but but sadly, um, but sadly, I'm out of luck here. I can't find that reference photo. But um, if you want to have a look on Unsplash and if you find it, please leave a link in the comment section so um, that I will put it in the video description. Oh my word, it's the blind leading the blind, the blind leading the blind today here <laughs> on the Frugal Crafter YouTube channel. But regardless, I really don't think you need the reference photo to follow along with this. It is a very simple composition and the color palette's really simple. And um, I really don't think that there's um, there's many ways to, to go wrong here. So grab your pastels and, uh, and play along. Now, something that I've noticed about oil pastels is that these tones like this that have white added colors that are uh, muted or morandi um, or pastel, they have white added in them and it makes them more opaque and creamy. So sometimes you'll be using a pastel that's a really vibrant color and it will almost want to just kind of gum up on you um, and be kind of hard and streaky. You don't get that situation when you're using a more pastel toned pastel. So if you had that situation in the past and it put you off pastels, try some colors like this. You can mix them in with your brighter colors and you'll get that more creamy consistency that you might want. Now, if your pastels get dirty and when you're overlapping your colors, then all you have to do is wipe them with a paper towel. And I recommend using a paper towel or a rag that you intend to throw away when you're done with that, um, when it's like, you know, kind of full, full up. Old socks are great for this. Um, like, you know, the mismatched ones, you never find the match again. It just sits there. Well, those are great for cleaning rags and also for like, you know, painting rags because then, you know, once you've used it all up, you can toss it. Um, but I don't recommend using this on something you're going to launder because that oil is, I don't, I don't think it's safe to ever put any sort of like oily rag in the dryer. And even though it's a pretty minute amount of oil for the binder and the 
oil pastel. It's still an oil, so I would only kind of wipe it on a disposable type of um, cloth or paper towel or whatnot. So just a little studio safety there. Um, I don't think you have to worry about these, com like the, the rags combusting like you would with um, oil painting solvents, but... Um, you know, but just, yeah, toss it away. Don't, don't wash it in your washer and dryer. Um, let's see. Oh, speaking of solvents, another thing you can do with your oil pastels is you can add some paint thinner or Gamsol or, um, any sort of solvent like that for blending. I would recommend that on your lower layers because, um, that's going to be thinning your pastel. It's going to be making it leaner. So it's going to make it more of a, of a thin layer that you'd want to have, um, lower. If you do it on top, you're going to be dissolving all the previous layers of your pastel and it may be moving around more than you want. If you want to do it just for a little detail, that's not really going to be a problem, but um, just something to consider. And in the same respect, you could also use your oil-based mediums like linseed oil, things like that um, on the upper layers if you wanted to, to add a little gloss or make a glaze or um, something like that. Now, oil pastels don't dry in the same uh, way that oil paints do. So it's still going to be a soft surface. So protecting it with fixative, if you're not going to frame it, mat it and frame it under glass right away, maybe, um, a good choice for you. Uh, I generally, um, I generally wrap it in glassine. I usually don't even spray fixative in it unless, uh, I'm going to have it in a sketchbook, then I will spray it with some fixative. Um, but if you have a fixative recommendation for oil pastels, please let me know in the comments below. I've been thinking about trying the Sennelier oil pastel fixative, but I haven't yet. I've just been using what I have, which is the um, the brush and pencils, colored pencil fixative. I figure it's meant for a waxy medium, then it should work fine for this, and it, and it seems to work just fine. But, um, but I've been curious about the Sennelier one. I'm adding highlights, uh, the snowy areas, but um, I've been adding them with a kind of a really light bluish gray color. I like to save my white for the end because um, that's kind of be going to be my brightest highlight, my brightest value. So I tend to wait on that, just like I wait on black a lot of times if I'm going to add black. But this is um what you call kind of like a um oh was a high key. It's not it's not a uh it doesn't have a huge value range like our our darkest value here is that like plum color in the middle. So uh, and that's probably one of the things that I would caution you about this set being your your only set of oil pastels or your first set of oil pastels, you do not have the darker value range um, and you don't have any really vibrant colors. So you're going to be limited as to what you can paint with this. So this would be a great addition to an, assort, an assorted set of basic colors, such as like, I don't know, maybe you went to the, the art store and you bought a, a set of crepas or, um, you know, even their store brand, whatever assorted set of like 48 or, you know, 24 or whatever they had, those would have your vibrant colors. And these would be a good addition to those. Um, and there's good pen, uh, pastels at every price point. I feel like the, the Crayola oil pastels are decent and they're very inexpensive. So, um, and a lot of the store brands, like I said, are made by Mungio and they're going to be good. Good too. So um, I feel like oil pastels, just like gouache, are one of those products that you can actually get a really good quality for a low price. And um, it seems to be one of those things that's not as, as fussy. It's not as hard to get a good quality product. You don't have to have the most expensive pigments to get the best quality product with oil pastels and gouache. Unlike watercolors where it's like, yeah, you got to be using good pigments or it's really evident because you're working in thin trans parent layers because you're working in thick opaque layers with these mediums um, that you can find you can find good stuff at cheap prices because it's not as expensive to uh, to make and get that good quality. And I just keep going back and forth between adding color fresh from the stick and um, and blending with my finger until I get the um, the amount of texture I want, the amount of detail I want. Um, I don't like to over blend. I don't like to blend everything because you do want to see some of those marks, I think. I think it's nice to have that painterly quality, but, um, but really it's up to you. I mean, you can get whatever sort of look you're going after. If you're someone who loves to have really detailed, ed uh, sharp edges and, and fine details, you can use a soft colored pencil with oil pastels. Um, my favorites to use with oil pastels would be um, the Prismacolor Premier, the Derwent Chromaflow, that, uh, the new uh, set from Artix that is the budget um, 
it's like $30, I think. It's a set of 72. Those are really soft and nice too. So you just need a soft pencil because otherwise it's not going to stick. It's just going to scrape away your pastel. And you also need a pencil, a paper that's got a bit of tooth to it so that it can accept that pencil. Because if your paper's too smooth, you're going to run into a wall where you can't add more pigment to it. When I'm using oil pastels or chalk pastels, that's one of the situations where I recommend having a rag and some rubbing alcohol handy or even a baby wipe um, because your fingers will get dirty and there'll be points where you'll want to really wipe your fingertips off so that you can keep blending and not contaminate the surface of your painting. The best part is taking the tape off and seeing those crisp borders. I really like how this came out. It was simple and uh, really fun to do, and I hope you give it a try. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial today. Please give me a thumbs up and let me know if you like these real-time version tutorials better than time-lapsed ones. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.